Okay, welcome. Uh, so this will be the mostly the, the, the last major video in this series. I've got the cabinet for the chassis just about done. We have the reverb wired back in and working. We're going to show you that in a second. Well, we'll put that at the end because we were going to show you first the amp when I fixed it. I finally figured out what was wrong. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I just wanted to mention we're going to continue to do these kinds of videos where we build amps like this. And it's been a lot of fun for me. And I just really want anybody that's uh, interested in this to please subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Give us some feedback. And if you have an idea on an amp you'd like to have built, please join us on our Patreon page. We'll give you in the links below. Uh, the Patreon route is a good way for us to get a little bit of extra money because building these things can be pretty expensive. So just uh, let us know what you think and uh, we'll be more than happy to start building anything that comes up to people's minds uh, as exciting. So uh, we'll have information all the time about what the latest builds that are coming up on Patreon as well as on our main YouTube channel. So please, uh, please do contribute. So there's the box. Okay, two lessons today. One is, if you look here, I've got my high watt resistor, and without thinking about it when I was probing, I had it leaned against it when I went to try and pick it up right now. It wouldn't come off very easily because it melted. So that'll learn you a lesson. Don't put anything on a very high watt resistor like this. Now, the other thing I'm a little worried about right now, I'm looking at it, is that some of that winding is exposed because some of it came off, so I'll have to be very careful around that. Anyway, the next most silly thing that I've done, I was spending some time looking at our, my schematic trying to understand what in the world could possibly be causing the weird behavior. When it suddenly dawned on me, <clears throat> the anodes all had a 100 ohm resistor on them. The anode in this case is right here, it's the pin 3. This is not a resistor for that, that's for my LED, but behind that, oh, there's pin 3, this is pin 3, and this is pin 3. There is no 100 ohm resistor on any of those. Um, normally you do have a, an anode resistor in everything else, you know, that's common in the, the circuits down here. But for whatever reason, I just, I guess, um, in my translation from my schematic to my layout diagram and then my actual delivery here, I forgot them. I don't know if that's going to fix it, but what we're going to do right now is I'm going to go put some in. Uh, I could not find at my local shop here, um, I couldn't find 100 ohm resistors, but these are 200 ohm resistors. So they're 3 watts. So we, the the four members helped me realize they need to be 3 watts to handle the current that's going to be running through the tube. So I've got 200 watt or 200 ohm 3 watt resistors that I'll put in parallel, which will make them 100 ohm. For now, I might replace them with better ones, but if they work, they work. I may not have to tinker with it. But ultimately, I'm going to go ahead now and desolder all those connections, resolder in these guys, and, and, and what I'll do is I'll shrink wrap over the end of them so that, like this, if you remember I talked about, you don't want them flapping in the breeze because if they touch, they can cause a big problem. Well, in this case, I don't have anywhere to anchor them to, but what I will do is shrink wrap right over the end of them so that they're protected from touching or arcing. So... At any rate, we'll get to that, and we'll come back and show you when we're done. All right, so I've resoldered these. I don't know if you can see the, as an example. I'm taking the soldered connection of this guy into the joint because it doesn't need the second set of them, but then this one takes the output from here into there as well, and then off down to the uh, tra output transformer. Similar to here, I've got these wired in as well. So one of the things that is generally a bad idea is having things flapping in the breeze, but since I don't have an anchor point like I have with each of these, what I've done is, is put some... Um, shrink wrap around those so that they can't easily ground to anything. So even though they can kind of move a little bit, if they touch anything, they should be protected because they've got shrink wrap right up to the, um, to the very end as far as I could get it. So uh, looks like we're in shape. We're going to go ahead and turn it on and see if the power comes up. And if that does, we'll try it out and see if that solves some of our problems with the 100 watts in. Here we go. Okay, we got LED light on. Tubes are all starting to warm up. I don't hear anything horrible happening. We've got the volume down to about zero. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, it's possible that really the biggest problem was just that these tubes were getting kind of over their limit. Hey, that looks like a fix. Awesome. I am pretty stoked about that. So it was really, uh, there were some other problems I fixed, but it looks like those resistors probably help it from kind of getting into a runaway state. Uh, they just kind of, you know, the whole point of a resistor is resisting flow, so they reduce the amount of current that can run through at, that, at any one point in time rapidly, so that it, it kind of makes it 
under control and it seems like that's solving the problem so i'm wondering if the amp designers and this is something i'll have to research a little bit if they maybe knew that at the high voltage they're pushing these tubes for more output it, it could easily get them into that runaway state and so this hopefully we will see now i'm gonna um uh, possibly go do another video with sound and, and we'll get some good quality audio with it recorded and we'll go from there i've got the good mic hooked up now and we're gonna play so let me know what you think this is clean a little lower volume uh, on 100 watts. Alright, so that's, as you can tell, pretty clean. Let's turn it up a bit more. The volume comes up fast and hard, but still really clean. Starting to get a teeny bit of that breakup happening now. We're about halfway, so now we'll bring it all the way up. And it starts feeding back, but a very nice harmonic feedback. If you can hear it, it feed back a little already, just there. It'll feed back really well. So at any rate, now this is going to be pretty loud. making my face melt it's so loud but it's definitely getting some nice crunch at that point but no nasty effects no popping no clicking that pretty much was it there's a lot of other stuff i've done has definitely been required to fix some of the other issues but really this was that last little bit dialing it down was if you forget something as fundamental as that following your schematic and, and a, a, a completely forgetting uh, uh an important component like that it's pretty obvious things aren't going to work as you'd expect so i'm pretty happy uh we're going to be um Probably at this point, the next stage of these video series are mostly wrapping up. We're going to show, we're going to build a nice wooden cabinet. We're going to um, put it into that. I'm going to restore the reverb because I've had it out for troubleshooting, etc. But really, uh, it's done. It sounds great. I'm pretty stoked. So this thing, obviously in a stadium, is going to blow people's heads off even a stadium. It's not something you'd be wanting to use in your apartment or home. Uh, so, But it sounds really great. You know, you can run the volume down lower about four or five, still get some great crunch. But even at that, it's pretty dang loud. So... The other troubleshooting, I just kind of want to recap. I'm going to actually turn the amp off to remove, remove the hum here. The other troubleshooting steps we went through were really just using the oscilloscope, finding where things were. That little bit that I was talking about where I was alternating between those two points uh, around that cap turned out probably to be a red herring. More than anything, the, the bigger issue really was just that maybe that oscilloscope probe at that point was causing some kind of a feedback. It was just the probe that was causing the issue. I don't know. But once I restored those, it sounds really good. And if somebody has any idea about why an oscilloscope would do that in a tube amp at that last stage, please let me know. It is kind of linked into the bias circuit and a few other things, so it's possible that was leaking back in. And as soon as I kind of connected that oscilloscope to ground, it caused some weird issue. I don't know. But at any rate, uh, I'm open to anyone telling me if they know what some of those issues were. But hey, I've got an amazingly, sound, amazingly cool sounding amp out of it, and I'm pretty stoked. So let, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks, guys. All right, so we've got it finished. We've actually fixed the reverb, as I'd mentioned, so give this a whirl right here. And so that's on minor, it's about halfway up. Well, let's crank it all the way up. Full reverb. Hopefully you can hear that nice splash as the reverb echoes off or decays off. So 
pretty excited. The build is done, and all I really have left to do is put it inside of a cabinet, you know, get the uh, faceplate made and kind of covering up all the holes that aren't in use, and this baby is done. So we'll probably have a short video that shows the final product, but it won't be very long, and that's not much more than just kind of the icing on the cake. So this is the, the main cake itself. As you can see, it is done. So thank you very much, everybody, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video as much as we've enjoyed making it. Oh, and by the way, I keep saying we all the time. That's because in the background, my wife's been helping shoot it. Say hi, Angie. Hi, Angie. Oh, there you go. So everybody have fun. Thanks. Uh, thumbs up. Subscribe. We'd really appreciate any input from you that we get. Thanks.